Hey, my name is Enda Murray. I'm the director of the Irish Film Festival. I'm delighted to be joined tonight by Kate Dolan, the director, and Hazel Dupe, the lead in the wonderful film, You Are Not My Mother. Uh, guys, uh, congratulations on a, on a fantastic uh, film. Um, I, I really enjoyed it. Thank you. Thanks so much. Um, yeah, yeah it's, uh, I, I, I'm very happy that we're getting to screen at your festival and the, I love the Irish film festivals all around the globe. So it's nice to be included in the lineup. Great. Thanks very much. Look, Kate, we, we'll just start off with you. Just tell us a little bit about the, how the film came about. Yeah, so it was, um, it was basically I kind of had a, a rough idea for the film, which was about kind of, you know, parent child relationships when they're strained by um, a parent kind of not not really being there in terms of, you know, mentally and physically for the child that, and that the child kind of the reversal of that relationship so that the child kind of has to become a carer. So those themes were something I wanted to explore. And obviously I'm big kind of into the horror genre and I wanted to make it in that genre. Um, so then I had also been doing a lot of research on like Irish folklore and, you know, it's something that had always been a big part of my life, but I think it was particularly kind of, felt like it was a good way to tell this story um, based on kind of some of the stories that I'd heard. So it sort of, the, the kind of all the different aspects started to marry together then as I developed it and, 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 and teased it out as an idea. So then we were very lucky to um, kind of at very fortuitous timing. Screen Ireland had uh, the POV scheme come along, which was um, for kind of first time feature directors to make a, a film on a micro budget. And because this film was kind of very contained in a house with minimal cast, it felt like it would be um, a good film to make uh, on the micro budget scheme. So we kind of speeded through into development then, which was very exciting. So. Yeah, and that was basically it. Great. Hazel, do you want to tell, uh, tell us a little bit about how you got involved with the project? Yeah, um, well, I was working on a different show at the time when I got um, the script for You Are Not My Mother in, and I was on a day off and I just read the script and immediately I was like thrown into the world of the film. That's like, I feel like that's just what Kate's writing did and I, I just knew immediately this is a film that I want to be in um, and then my um, my agent set up a, a meeting between myself and Kate and actually I think on the day that we were supposed to meet up in person the restrictions for Covid in Ireland kind of heightened and we were like maybe we'll just do it over Zoom um, so we had a Zoom and uh, we kind of saw eye to eye on I feel like pretty much everything and it was just really really cool um and then a couple of weeks later i got a, a phone call to say that i had gotten the part and that we wanted to work together and that was sort of the beginning of the story right so char i wouldn't say is the easiest character to interpret how did you prepare for a, a role like this well um I was, I feel like this this particular film was one that I was extremely excited to uh, explore. And I spent the months leading up to it kind of writing in a diary, um, doing little diary entries as if I was Shar, um, on whatever holidays I was on or road trips. So I would just spend the whole time writing down um, bullet points or diary entries and uh, I feel like that kind of that really helped me create the world around a person who um, didn't feel safe in her world, but maybe like all of her thoughts could fit on one piece of paper. Um, and I think a lot of it was to do with uh, myself and Kate and um, Carolyn Bracken, who plays Angela, um, just working together and. Uh, yeah, just exploring the different themes and the different scenes um, in in a way because we were all, it was all our first time on a, a horror feature. And uh, yeah, it was definitely something we, I think anyway, put the practicality of it benefited me. 
um because you can only do so much in your head um so when we all came together it was just like clockwork it was brilliant great um just coming back kate like um it's 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 a horror genre and um i was interested what was the the tone that you were seeking in the film and and how did you work to achieve it i know i found it very unsettling uh, uh, watching it um which i think is is a good thing for a horror film um i, I suppose that's 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 my definition of a good horror film that it it, it just um it, i found it unsettling what, what how did you work to achieve that type of tone um yeah i think you know i i'm obviously a fan of lots of different um types of films in the horror genre like i have a very varied kind of list of films that i love but i think for this it felt like um it felt like it needed to be very grounded in reality and feel um you know like our real world that we live in um and that you know everything kind of felt like the family felt real and tangible and and nothing was kind of um i suppose kind of outlandish too much until you deliver the the third act um no spoilers but uh the i think yeah because you know for me it's important that it felt it was going to feel slightly ambiguous either way as to what's happening with the mother um throughout the film so uh, you know to make it feel like almost i, I I've, I've read I, I hate the term but i've read a few reviews where people have described it as like you know a kind of a horror mix with a kitchen sink drama that kind of like it feels grounded in like a real family going through something and then you just have these kind of supernatural elements start to kind of reveal themselves slowly throughout the film and quite slow pace so and um, you know that was very intentional from the script stage beginning that it would feel like that and because you know i i'm a big um fan of the idea that um scary things exist in our real world and monsters and, and magic and all that kind of stuff because it kind of you know and um, makes things more interesting so it was definitely that was kind of where i was coming from but um yeah i mean like we had that like there was such a great team on it as well like um i think particularly kind of the music and sound um and you know how everything looked at it already came together to just deliver that um unsettling feeling as you said yeah and did you work in terms of a visual style was that uh, something that you had in mind when you were starting off in terms of the visual style of the film yeah definitely i think when i'm writing i can't I, because i'm like a writer director i think i really can't help once I start writing something, like starting to collect imagery and and create like kind of folders on my laptop just full of images and, and different things to um, help inform the style when we're making the film. So it definitely, um, the style was growing throughout the kind of writing process. And then when the rest of the HODs came on board, like the cinematographer and, and, and stuff like that, and even the cast, you know, sh sh sharing those images with them so they can kind of start to get a sense of what I'm after. Um, but I think for like, you know, Shar is very isolated and, and, and feels very unsafe in her home. So I feel like creating the house and how that felt and looked was really important to kind of have somewhere that felt um, kind of imposing in on her, like claustrophobic and full of like shadows kind of closing in, even in the like, you know, middle of the day that it still felt quite, quite like that. So, um, yep. yeah, that was a big part of it through from the very beginning. Yeah. Okay. And, um, just you mentioned about um, Halloween and um, you know there being scary things in our background and about your connection with folk Irish folk stories. Um, was, was that so? That was a very uh, conscious thing to, to bring in the Halloween aspect and it being an Irish festival. I'm fed up telling people every year that it's, it's an Irish of Irish origin. But do you want to say a little bit about that? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um... It's, it's funny because obviously the film was very much based in kind of uh, changing mythology and fairy stories and and the real world impact of those stories. So, you know, real families that I'd read about that were kind of impacted by believing these things to be real. So then that, you know, their some of their family members would meet a very tragic end because they believe that their family member was, in fact, a changing. Um, so, you know, all these things were informing this story as I went along, but it was actually a, a, a few drafts in that I decided to set it at Halloween because 
I started doing more research and reading more about kind of like pagan Ireland and witchcraft and, and all these kind of things. And I think um, just the more I read about Samhain, like the traditional pagan holiday that Halloween's based on, it was, you know, it just felt like that that, that was kind of a, a good reason why all this was happening. Because the idea of Samhain was that kind of like the border, the, like the the doorway between our world and the other world are it's extremely thin so you kind of have to protect yourself that's why people carve pumpkins was to like act as a kind of deterrent for spirits and, and all these kind of things so um it just and I, I love Halloween so I was like well it's my first feature film so why can't it be set at Halloween I'm just gonna do that anyway <laughs> right so yeah so it was very fun to do that yeah Okay. Hey, hey, so um, I, I was looking, you know, the other films that you've, you've done in the past, like Michael Inside and, and, and Float Like a Butterfly. They, they weren't afraid to um, uh, 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 examine issues that, were, uh, that are sensitive, like uh, in, in, in terms of uh, delinquency or um, the, the traveller community. Uh, do you think that Irish audiences are more receptive now to looking at the the treatment of, of social is issues on, on film? Um, yeah, I think so. I think there's, there's definitely a couple of different types of Irish audiences and audiences all around the world. And I think um, for some people, uh, film is more of an escape than um, a challenge, as in like they, they would rather go to film to, to leave whatever troubles they've got in everyday life behind yeah. for a couple of hours and then there's some people who love to go into film and be challenged by the film that's in front of them so i think that's a quite a universal thing so um i think we were just we were lucky with how um how uh generous our audiences were with this film and i think kate's writing she managed to marry the two the the sensitivity of um, the topic and the you know surreal fantastical elements together so well that it's um it's quite simultaneously happening you're you're feeling that you're losing um whatever you went through during your day while you're sitting down to watch this film that actually is dealing with quite a raw and intense um topic so yeah it's a tricky yeah. question that but i i believe that this film brought those two together for sure and uh I think Irish audiences were really receptive to it. How has it been received in um, Ireland? Um, very, very well. I think Kate will be the one to answer that question. I think there's a dog barking on my end. So I'm <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I think it's been, yeah, it's been really good. You know, it's, um, we kind of, you know, as I said, we made this on kind of a micro budget scheme with Screen Ireland. So when we were making it, I don't think anyone had kind of huge expectations for what, where we would take it or what would happen with the film. I think everyone was just kind of happy to make this story and, and, and row in and do all that. And then I think then, yeah, when it got released, we were really surprised with the kind of positive response and, and so much, you know, the Irish press were really positive about reviewing the film and then um you know even then i think when we were nominated for some of if does which we kind of weren't expecting because i think horror movies don't usually really get that kind of uh that kind of love um so that was really cool and then i think you know even recently we the film um came on netflix in ireland and again it was kind of like it was kind of shown to a whole um new audience people who you know hadn't seen it or missed it when it had been released in the cinema and I you know the amount of tweets we got just like saying how much people like the film and so it was just you know it's really lovely and I think people people recognize maybe it's an Irish film that we hadn't seen yet you know even in depiction of Halloween and and all that kind of stuff I think people really liked the, to, to see that and have a Irish horror film that was you know doing something like that so um yeah it's been brilliant it's been really really nice yeah what what were uh, I suppose uh, the m most memorable moments for you in in making the film? Memorable moments making the film, um, good or bad moments? <laughs> oh, good, good, good. good. Um, um, no, I think uh, I I can't really pinpoint like singular moments, but I think like you know working with Hazel and working with Carolyn and like all the cast, I think 
it was just like a lovely experience because you know we didn't have a lot of money it was during covid in november in the freezing cold we had to like open all the windows during between takes and stuff but i think everybody the cast crew like everyone came to set like so positive and just so excited to make something and i think every day even though we were making a film that you know had very intense emotional beats in it and then it was quite serious at times like i think everyone's mood on set was really you know positive and just like happy to be there and like having fun and and joking around and having a, a, a really nice like time on set there was like great relationships on set so i think just that like that feeling was really nice every day just to go in that you felt like going into work was going to be fun and exciting and i think that just kind of is my takeaway probably from making the film great hazel can i throw the same question over to you yeah um well i was smiling there while, I, while kate was talking because i can just remember paul reed just cracking me up every day he was on set he plays my uncle aaron um yeah what what kate said is so true that everyone just came to set with like buckets of energy somehow i don't know how but it could have been that we were in a lockdown and no one had any outlet except for set <laughs> uh, yeah. <better> jokes. <laughs> but um i actually remember one of the days uh myself and jordan jordan please suzanne um jordan jones we were it's in that scene where we come back from um, having our little kind of bonding moment the first time the two um characters kind of find a solace in each other and become friends and um they come in the door and i just remember like we're supposed to be slightly high and we come in and we start talking to granny and for some reason because we were playing this scene it was quite it was really subtle but like we were playing it so that we were like a little bit high and very giddy and i think the more you uh the more you pretend, like we had to do the scene over and over again, as you do in film, but the more you pretend that you're high, the more you start to feel like you are. So we just started getting <laughs> thick, like it was, it was the most funny experience I think I've ever had on set. We just bounced off each other so much. Um, I was thinking about that this morning, actually. Oh, that was a great day. Yeah, I don't really have much, like it's not ex extremely exciting for anybody to hear about, but me and Jordan, but that was great. And, um, um, can, can you tell us uh, what you're working on at the moment or um, any, any um, uh, projects that are coming up for you? Yeah, um, well, I can't say too much at the moment, but I do have something coming up that I'm really excited to uh, start working on. So um, when I can okay. say more. Um, and, more um, will be said. <laughs> okay. Kate, yeah, we've, um, we've got to ask you the same question. Yeah, um, well, yeah, so I have um, two feature films which are in development with help from Screen Ireland again. So those uh, scripts are kind of in the works. I've been writing them this year and kind of just working on one and then the other kind of concurrently. Um, but then I'm also actually starting on uh, Kin very soon, which is a kind of Irish TV drama um, here in Ireland. And it's uh, also made by AMC in the States. So it's it's a kind of an Irish crime drama. So I'm directing two episodes of that, um, which was announced uh, recently. So I'm allowed to say that. Um, so I'll be I'll be working on that um, soon enough as well. Okay. Hey, thanks for uh, taking the time to um, uh, talk to us and congratulations again on, on a marvellous film. And I'm sure um, that we, we will hear much more in the future from Kate Dolan and Hazel Doop. Thanks a million, guys, and enjoy the Irish heat wave. We will. Thank you. <laughs> Cheerio. Bye-bye. Thanks. Bye.